In today's show, we're going to take a deeper dive into the importance of thermal stress and cold immersion therapy to help the brain when it comes to mood, as well as mental health and possibly preventing Alzheimer's disease. I want to talk about these two different papers that I found to be very fascinating, break them down for you and talk about the take home messages here which are essentially that when you get cold on purpose, it improves your mood and, and mental outlook. And I don't need to tell you, we're amid a mental health crisis here in the US with drug overdoses being now the second leading cause of death in young people outpacing COVID-19 by orders of magnitude. We know that suicide, violent crime, uh, violence in school, uh, the amount of people that are on prescription uh, psychiatric medications, including Ritalin, as well as SSRIs is, is just through the roof. And we also know that Alzheimer's and dementia are on the rise. And there's a, this one of the papers we're going to talk about talks about how improving thermal stress and activating brown adipose tissue could be a tool to help alleviate dementia and Alzheimer's. And I think that is a novel concept for a lot of people. We know that insulin and metabolic health play important roles in the etiology or the development of Alzheimer's and dementia. But hitherto, we haven't been speaking to the importance of brown adipose tissue and possibly cold immersions and cold showers for elderly people, because it turns out that body temperature in elderly people decline. And as this review paper talks about, it could be in part due to loss of brown adipose tissue. And if you think about, you know, People characterize Canadians or people who live in the Midwest that go to Arizona and Florida in the winter as snowbirds, right? They're, they're leaving those areas because they can't tolerate the cold. Well, that population is also increasingly susceptible to developing Alzheimer's. So there is a correlation here potentially. You know, we don't know the direction of causality or how statistically significant this uh, correlation is, but there seems to be a correlation between uh, inability to tolerate cold and the onset of age-related cognitive decline which would suggest that if you could become more tolerant to cold now, you might preserve your mental faculties for longer. And so that's the second paper that we're gonna talk about. But let's first dive into this one right here. Titled Short-Term Head Out Whole Body Cold Water Immersion Facilitates Positive Affect and Increases Interaction Between Large-Scale Brain Networks. This was the first study of its kind. That, And this was actually, ladies, you're gonna love this. All 14 study subjects were women. I know there's a lot of studies that we talk about with fasting, with cold plunging, with sauna, and all the study subjects are men. So this actually breaks one myth, and that is that women can't cold plunge. There's so many people that say, it might be good for men, but, but it's not been studied in women. In fact, Dr. Sonberg, who's outside of Denmark, I believe, she has a book all about winter swimming, cold water swimming for its purported benefits for metabolic health, for fat loss and, and brain health. You know, she's a female, obviously. And again, all 14 study subjects here, this was conducted by a team of researchers in the UK. And essentially what they did is, is this is the first study of its kind that looked at brain fMRI images of brain networks after a five minute head out cold immersion and the temperature of the water was 20 degrees Celsius. So it's actually not that cold, but it's cold enough uh, for five minutes. So these ladies, 14 of them, they did some standardized mood assessment scores. And these are some of the objective markers they looked at. Feelings of being determined, attentive, jittery, active, afraid, proud, enthusiastic, uh, hostile, scared, guilty, strong, upset, excited, distressed, interested, and so forth. And essentially what they found is that after doing a five-minute head out, so they were not underwater for five minutes, their head was out, just like you would do in an ice barrel or in a cold tank or in the ocean, right? Your head's not under the whole time. They looked at these objective markers of, of mood, and they also went on to look at brain imaging studies. And what they found is there were significant changes within various brain regions, which I want to get into. But first, I want to thank this video show sponsor, icebarrel.com. This is the best looking small form factor at home cold immersion tank that is 100% American made. Look, I know you can go on Amazon and buy some sort of rubber made plastic garbage that was made in China that's going to fall apart in like a month, okay? What's unique about the ice barrel is it's so easy to clean, it maintains its cold temperature because it's very thick. It's American made plastic. This ships to you via freight. You can save $125 by clicking the link below over at icebarrel.com forward slash H I H. I've had this unit for over two years. People always comment, What is that? It looks good. It comes with a nice set of stairs you can get into. What's unique is that even like myself, you're over six foot, you can get your entire body in the tank. You can clean it very easily. It has a little spigot at the bottom. This is awesome. So if you live in an apartment, a condo, you don't have a big backyard, this is the perfect at home cold immersion tank, which is important because what we're gonna talk about next is how cold therapy improves your mood, your mental state, your overall energy, and your outlook on life. So if you are 
struggling with your relationships, with your finances, with the direction of your life, and you feel like you're negative and and want to get a mood boost, this is one of the best ways that's natural and has no downsides to improving your mood. So support your mood and your whole body health and possibly brain health that we're going to talk about shortly by going over to icebrow.com for slash H-I-H where you can save with the code and using the, the link in the description below. So let's go back and talk about this particular study. Again, the 14 women that went in the cold immersion tank for five minutes and what they found in terms of the significant changes in mood, outlook on life, and decreasing feelings of pessimism or negativity. The scientists say the results of the self-reported mood questionnaire showed a significant increase in positive affect and a decrease in negative affect after cold water immersion. This finding is well aligned with two previous studies that reported acute positive changes in mood following a single immersion in cold water. Our data suggests that the change in positive affect was mainly associated with increasing alertness and feeling more inspired, active, attentive, and proud, while less decreasing negative affect related to feelings of less nervousness and feelings of distressed. I will say new parents, you're often distressed. I will say, you know, if you've been through a separation or a breakup or a divorce, you're stressed. If your business is slowing down from the economy, right? High interest rates, you know, inflation, you might experience distress. Go into a cold immersion tank. I love meditation, but I'll be honest, meditation is not as impactful immediately in comparison, at least for me. Uh, I've been meditating for many years now. The cold immersion tank just literally shifts your, your mood like like no other. So really important. And again, they looked at fMRI images of the brain and found changes structurally that were palpable quantitatively within the brain. They say notably the positive changes in an affective state after cold water immersion tap mood states that are typically reduced in depressive disorders. That's important. Overcoming the natural phenomenon of the brain to shift brain regions and alleviate that feeling. If you've ever been depressed before, I've been depressed once in my life during college, and I remember the things that I used to experience joy from, I no longer experienced joy from, and that was like the worst feeling in the world. I'd, how I would you know, improve my mood uh, up to that point was going out and exercising outdoor, outside. And I remember going on my bike, riding with my teammates and so forth. I was on a cycling team. And I was like, this just sucks. Like, there's no point of this. Why am I doing this? And so if you could have a natural tool to alleviate that very uncomfortable feeling that creates depolarization and almost feeling like life is like not real, like that is amazing. And that, that's what these, uh, you know, sub study subjects actually felt, which I think is quite powerful. Uh, they say, for example, uh, reduced energy levels, motivation and alertness and elevated emotional disturbances are well-recognized symptoms of mental health conditions such as major depression, which again were alleviated by a five-minute one-time cold session, which is phenomenal. I think if there was a drug that did that, most people would be buying it, which is why many people are now on psychiatric medications. Young kids are now on, on that, and as well as, as postmenopausal women. There's a high rate of this, but I want to read to you here. The increase in positive affect was supported by a unique component of interacting networks, including the medial prefrontal node of the default mode network, which by the way, is how psilocybin and LSD work. They impact the default mode network, which helps change the, the brain's sort of default state, improving mental well-being and so forth, as well as the posterior parietal lobe of the frontal temporal network and anterior cingulate of the rostral prefrontal parts of the salient network and visual lateral network. A lot of mental jargon there, you know, neurologic jargon, but essentially what they found is that there was global changes within the brain that often you see in meditative states or with psychedelic drugs or with exercise. So in summary here, this part of this video uh, mentions that getting cold on purpose improves your brain in, in various parameters. It's not relegated to one neurotransmitter, one neurohormone or peptide. There are global changes within the prefrontal cortex and the default mode network, which I think is quite fascinating. So let's talk about study number two that I would like to review here. Uh, this paper is titled Metabolic Determinants of Alzheimer's Disease, a Focus on Thermoregulation. And this is actually a really good paper. I mean, if you're interested in helping your parents, you know, if you want to con convert your parents into doing cold baths and cold immersions and cold showers, I've tried, you know, my mom's doing it a little bit. My dad has interests, you know, they, they are doing sauna therapy at the gym now, which is great because they understand the importance they're in, but uh, they're not yet doing cold water swimming in alpine lakes like I like to do or doing cold tanks, but hey, maybe that will change with time. But this paper, I think is just a great review paper highlighting all of the different interactions between the brown adipose tissue, metabolic health, and the changes within cognitive capacity with age. And essentially what you see here in figure number one is a phenomenal overview of how thermoregulation defects 
help in terms of, of worsening cognitive decline. So, so they are part and parcel with the onset of age-related cognitive decline and dementia in Alzheimer's. And so you see a reduction in body temperature, a change in brown adipose tissue activity, and abnormal regulation of the circadian clock system, which over time can lead to memory improvement, increased formation of tau protein, beta amyloid, brain inflammation, free radical stress, impaired brain glucose utilization, and brain insulin resistance. So it's important we now know that Alzheimer's disease and dementia can be characterized as type 3 diabetes, uh, type 3 diabetes within the brain, where the brain becomes glucose intolerant and insulin resistant. But we also know that cold immersion therapy and thermal stress interventions are key tools for metabolic health. So it makes sense that we should start to consider them as a tool, them meaning cold tanks, as well as uh, saunas and so forth, to help to improve thermal stress and resistance. And that's, again, elucidated here in this figure two, where you see the brown adipose tissue uh, as you get cold on purpose and you start to sort of uh, make this tissue more metabolically active. What you can see here is changes in glucose metabolism, insulin release, uh, decreased fat mass, and that can improve cognitive function by improving uh, brain insulin signaling. So the scientists say body temperature is the oldest known metabolic readout and mechanisms underlying its maintenance fail in the elderly when the incidence of Alzheimer's disease rises. This raises the possibility that an age-associated thermoregulatory defect contributes to energy failure underlying Alzheimer's disease pathogenesis. Brown adipose tissue, also known as BAT, plays a central role in thermogenesis and maintenance of body temperature. In recent years, the modulation of brown adipose tissue activity has been increasingly demonstrated to regulate energy expenditure, insulin sensitivity, and glucose utilization, which could provide benefits for Alzheimer's disease prevention. Here, we review the evidence linking thermoregulation, brown adipose tissue, and insulin-related metabolic defects with Alzheimer's disease, and we propose mechanisms through which correlating thermoregulatory impairments could slow the progression and delay the onset of Alzheimer's disease. So essentially what they're saying is that if you start taking cold showers, if you start getting cold on purpose, if you improve your resilience or resistance to cold by priming your brown adipose tissue, which naturally declines with age, as well as the onset of diabetes, that is to say, that as you get older and as your metabolic health declines, there is a demonstrable, observable change and reduction in the activity of your brown adipose tissue. But the good news is, is you can change this. You can ameliorate that through being intentional by being cold on purpose and getting cold on purpose, which I think is quite fascinating. The scientists say recognizing that Alzheimer's disease is a metabolic disease offers new opportunities for treatment. By using the therapeutic arsenal initially developed for other metabolic impairments such as type 2 diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular diseases, among the metabolic defects observed in Alzheimer's disease, thermoregulatory deficits have not received that much attention so far. This contrasts with the fact that body temperature is one of the most basic metabolic markers of general metabolism that decreases in the elderly at approximately the same time in life when the incidence of Alzheimer's disease rises. Due to its central role in thermoregulation, increasing brown adipose tissue activity could restore thermoregulation, improve metabolic parameters, that is insulin resistance, and possibly alleviate key facets of Alzheimer's disease neuropathology as well. Indeed, although brown adipose tissue has regained a huge interest in the field of obesity and diabetes, only few studies have looked at this intriguing thermogenic tissue in dementia. Now let's highlight and expand upon one thing they mentioned here. Among metabolic dysfunctions, thermoregulatory deficits emerge at an old age corresponding to the time when the incidence of Alzheimer's disease rises exponentially. So I think it's important to recognize this temporal correlation between elderly age and the onset of Alzheimer's disease. I've shared with you before, around 60, the rate of Alzheimer's is one in 17, or I'm sorry, 17%. So 17% of six-year-olds have Alzheimer's disease. That jumps to nearly one in three or 30% at the year over age 75. So there's almost a doubling in the prevalence at the age that conveniently corresponds with the time in life where people's brown adipose tissue is less metabolically active and you know most people are intolerant to cold. And here's the thing. It's like, you know, as you get older, you naturally get weaker. But if you exercise, you can maintain your strength. Why is it that we are not considering the fact that as we get older, we can improve and maintain our thermoregulatory capacities by getting hot on purpose and cold on purpose? We recommend high-tech health saunas. I think everyone, if they're keen on improving cardiometabolic health, including brain health, they should invest in a, in a sauna, an infrared sauna from High Tech Health. I'll link the description in the description below. Links to that, a phenomenal family-owned company out of Colorado, as well as an ice barrel. This is a great tool. You get tons of use out of this. It's cool to have 
social events that don't revolve around alcohol and eating junk food, right? Super Bowl parties, Memorial Day barbecues, where most people are bringing desserts and sweets. I mean, how many times do you have an event and people are just bringing over loads of processed food and junk? Imagine having a party where you're like, hey, come over, we're gonna sauna in contrast and just talk, right? We don't need to eat all the crap. Uh, and people feel much better and you create this sense of community and connection, which is great. Again, I highlight that because those interventions can be helpful to maintain the brown adipose tissue activity. In fact, the scientists say more recent findings derived mainly from imaging studies provide evidence of brown adipose tissue activity in adults, albeit declining with age. So we can maintain the activity of this adipose tissue subtype that is hitherto only characterized in young children. That is the brown fat on the subscapular fat, but we can improve that. And the scientists say with old age, thermoregulation mechanisms become less efficient, less heat is produced, and it dissipates more due to reduced peripheral vasoconstriction. So we can overcome that with training. And although we don't have large randomized placebo controlled studies of elderly people going in and doing cold plunges, there was a, a really well done uh, review of centenarians in Time Magazine in 2018. And they interviewed people from Ireland that were jumping into the Isle of Man, which, you know, Sam and I, when we went to Ireland, we actually did some cold immersion therapy. And these centenarians, uh, they would meet every Sunday, I believe, or Saturday, some such thing, once on the weekend, and they would all do cold water swimming together. And when the journalist for this uh, centenarian sort of longevity focused episode of Time Magazine, they attributed that and this could be arbitrary, it could be unrelated to their longevity, but they attributed that part of their improved health and vitality in their elderly years to getting cold on purpose on a regular basis with friends. I want to highlight that with friends. It's important. You know, obviously doing these things in isolation is great, but it's much easier if you have a buddy and you just say, hey, look, on Sunday, we're going to go in the ocean and swim. On Sunday, we're going to go for a hike and go in an alpine lake. I think that's awesome. So in conclusion, the scientists say, while the occurrence of thermoregulatory defects in the geriatric population is often considered common knowledge among health professionals and family caregivers, actual evidence of a higher incidence of hypothermia is limited. There have been reports of lower mean oral temperatures recorded in persons age 75 and older compared to individuals aged between 65 and 74 years old. A recent review estimates that older adults have lower temperature than younger adults. On average, circadian temperature rhythms may also be altered in the elderly compared to younger adults and need time to be considered when assessing body temperature. So that's one thing that I, I did want to mention and highlight here. I'm glad the scientist uh, reminded me of this and the important point here is your body temperature fluctuates throughout the day and it's naturally lowest in the morning. So a good time, if you're wondering about tactics, a lot of people want to know how many minutes do I need? How cold does it have to be and all that? My, what's more important to me is the circadian rhythm influence here. Take your cold shower, do your cold plunge in the morning. If all you do is 20, 30 seconds, that's fine for me. That's way better than 99% of the population. If you want to do two minutes, 90 seconds, three minutes, then you're a rock star. You're in the top 0.01%. So more is not necessarily always better. I see some people bragging about how they did 15 minutes in this or that, and they sometimes complain of nerve tingling, nerve pain, you know, frostbite-like symptoms. That's not ideal. Be consistent and do it in the morning. If all you have access to is a cold shower, then so be it. Do that. If you can afford something like the ice barrel, put it on your deck, make it a routine, kind of create some mental uh, trade-offs with your, with your mind. For me, I don't allow myself to drink coffee before I do the uncomfortable cold immersion. And that's been a nice thing. I love coffee. So I get all the coffee stuff ready, get the espresso machine there, grind the beans, and I put it in there. And I'm just like, Mike, you cannot have this until you do your cold plunge. Some days it's 15 seconds because I didn't sleep as well, or it's cold outside, it's raining in the winter. Other days, it's 90 seconds in, in the ice barrel. So it really depends upon the day. And I don't beat myself up over it if I only do 15 seconds versus 90. The consistency is what matters. If you just do 15, 20 seconds, you're going to start to shiver. You're going to get cold and you're going to help in train and, and convert or beige your white adipose tissue to cause it to behave more like brown adipose tissue. These tissues are inducible. They're malleable. They're amenable to to cold immersion uh, therapies and strategies. So that's the important point that I want to mention here. So hopefully you found this helpful. The take-home message here, getting cold on purpose improves your mood, improves your default mode network, which is really important, and it may help you prevent Alzheimer's disease and improve cognition over time. So I want to thank you for doing all the way in. Thank you for Icebro for sponsoring this video, and we will catch you in a future one down the road.